Over the next few episodes, I'm going to give you a snapshot of the Middle East and the success, failures and challenges faced by the world's most volatile region. Today we begin with Persia, now commonly known as Iran. Hello and welcome to In Focus. Iran is home to one of the world's oldest continuous major civilizations. The original inhabitants date back to 4,000 years BC and have a rich history of exploration, scientific discovery and religion. For about 500 years from the late 8th century to the mid 13th century, the Middle East experienced the golden age of Islam. Science was flourishing, particularly in the fields of mathematics, astronomy and medicine. In this time, algebra was developed, smallpox and measles were identified, Fever was found to be part of the body's defence, decimal fractions were invented, solar year was determined, the Andromeda galaxy was discovered, and much, much more. It wasn't quite the scientific revolution, but it was a unique time in Islamic history. A time when religion encouraged lateral thinking rather than stifled it. It was a sort of attitude that helped the numerous Persian empires flourish to become some of the biggest and most powerful the world has ever seen. These empires, dynasties, whatever you want to call them, all had a king or emperor as their head, referred to as a shah. There are a few things about Iran that make it unique in the Middle East. Firstly, the majority of Iranians are not Arab, they're Persian. They don't speak Arabic, they speak Farsi, or as we call it in the West, Persian. Secondly, and most importantly when it comes to relations with the Arab countries, they're majority Shia Muslim. Most countries in the Arab League are Sunni, and if there's one thing you should know about Islam, it's that Sunnis and Shiites do not get along. Actually, not getting along is an understatement. They hate each other. So Iran is a bit of an outcast in the Middle East. It wasn't always like that, so let's take a look at how the country has interacted with the rest of the world in the last 100 years, and why. In the early 20th century, Persia was weak and Britain and Russia were working to keep it that way so they could continue to exert their influence. That was especially true the moment oil was discovered in the Middle East, which saw the rise of the Anglo-Persian oil company, now known as BP. Before, I was talking about shahs, and they'd been around for thousands of years again in the form of dynasties. The last dynasty belonged to two people, Reza Shah and Muhammad Reza Shah. Reza Shah was the original and he was installed after overthrowing the Qajar dynasty in 1925 with a little help from his European friends. Originally, he wanted to turn Iran into a modern secular republic, much like Turkey under Ataturk. Britain slowly allowed Iranians to have a greater democratic say and the party that benefited most from that was the communist two-day party of Iran. The leader, Mohammad Mossadegh, was elected as prime minister by popular vote in 1951. Two things here. One, this is the height of the Cold War and Iran has just elected a communist leader. Two, Mossadegh succeeds in nationalizing what's now being called the Anglo-Iranian oil company. Surprise, surprise, Britain is not happy and asks the CIA to carry out a coup d'etat. The Western-backed Shah returns from exile. All is well in the world. But not really. Sure, the West was happy, but Mohammad Reza Shah has now turned into a ruthless autocrat, employing secret police called the Savak for his protection. They were brutal, torturing and executing opponents of the Shah's regime. In 1975, the Shah dissolved Iran's two-party system and replaced it with one, the Resurgence Party, which the entire population was required to be a member of. The flip side to all of this is that the country was prosperous. Oil revenues were booming, infrastructure and education investment were at record levels, and infant mortality was down. Still, the population wasn't happy. Protests against unemployment and the tyrannical rule of Reza Shah began to arise. Originally, they were peaceful. Then police began to get violent, which only led to more protests. The Shah fled the country and ended up in the US. More on that shortly. The 1979 revolution would change the course of history forever. If you follow the pattern of revolutions, Iran's in 1979 was unusual. Let's take a look at some of the key facts. The usual causes were absent. For example, a disgruntled military, underclass rebellion, or a financial crisis. In fact, the country was relatively wealthy at the time. The revolution was mostly non-violent, hugely popular, 
and replaced a pro-Western semi-absolute monarchy with an anti-Western authoritarian theocracy. As you'd expect, Iran's relationship with the West really changed after 1979. Ruhollah Khomeini was installed as the country's first Grand Ayatollah or Supreme Leader, effectively replacing the Shah as head of state. You may not be surprised to find out that Khomeini hated the US, calling them the Great Satan. There was the burning of US flags in the streets and dozens of American diplomats and citizens were taken hostage when the US Embassy was overthrown. 52 Americans were held captive for 444 days, with Iran seeking their release in exchange for the extradition of Reza Shah. Then President Jimmy Carter refused, relations disintegrated, and the US imposed their first economic sanctions on Iran. It would be far from their last. The hostages were eventually freed in 1981, following the negotiation of the Algiers Accords. In exchange for their release, the US promised not to intervene in Iran's internal affairs and unfroze over $7 billion worth of Iranian assets. Over the next couple of decades, both countries took pot shots at each other. George W. Bush included Iran in the axis of evil, and suspicions grew surrounding their nuclear capabilities. The UN and America responded with more and more sanctions. But it became clear Iran wasn't going to shift policy anytime soon. But in 2013, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad was replaced by the more moderate Hassan Rouhani. He ran on a platform of developing a civil rights charter and improving the relations with the West. Those promises are beginning to show. In 2015, a historic nuclear deal was brokered. Iran has wound down its nuclear program and, in turn, America, Europe and the UN have lifted almost all economic sanctions. It's a major step towards regional stability and could see Iran transformed from an isolated pariah state to a regional power. Relations with the West may be thawing, but fellow regional power and bitter enemy Saudi Arabia are not happy. As the US and Europe begin to invest more money into Iran, expect a new Middle Eastern power dispute to unfold. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.